Intel has been having a tough time as of late. Between Ryzen and Threadripper taking their cake in the desktop sphere, to Apple moving to their own ARM chips for future, uh, future MacBooks and Mac Pros, it's been tough to recommend Intel to anyone, really, business or pleasure. For the last three years, I've been recommending and building with AMD almost universally, especially for the lower end. If you watch Low Spec Gamer, you know AMD's APUs absolutely dominate for value and performance. But hang on, Intel made a big deal about the integrated graphics on their 10th uh, gen uh, consumer chips. Um, and what if you don't have space for a full-size gaming desktop? All you've got is an Intel-based work laptop supplied to you by your place of employment. Here we have a laptop with hyper-threaded quad-core i5-10210U, I guess? 8 gigs of RAM, no dedicated GPU, and lots of business-oriented features that we probably aren't going to use. One way to tell a true gamer is whether their laptop screen folds all the way down, am I right? Though the dedicated calculator button up here is actually super useful, though it's way too easy to open a trillion calculators by holding the button down. The SIM card slot would be cool if I wanted yet another payment to drain my bank account every month. Task Manager says the integrated GPU is just Intel HD graphics. That's weird, no number. Let's check Arc. Oh, just Intel UHD graphics. I guess that's what we get. Handbrake and Cinebench performance is really solid. Slightly less than my 8th gen i7 laptop, as you'd expect. Something that impressed me, which I'm not sure is a result of it having a fresh Windows install or a fast SSD, but it wakes up incredibly fast and logs in with the fingerprint sensor instantly. I guess that's what makes a business laptop feel snappy, right? The keyboard is also good, despite some flexing of the mostly plastic chassis. The small trackpad with separate buttons is a little disappointing, however. Since using this laptop for just Excel and Outlook is pretty boring, let's put Intel's claims to the test. My current roster of games that I'm playing are Ion Fury, Black Mesa, SnowRunner, Halo, uh, and that's about it. And honestly, none of them are particularly difficult to run. I'm getting, you know, locked 1080p60 from a 1650 downstairs on all of them. Starting with the most challenging, SnowRunner. It really disappointed. The game speed seems to be tied to frame rate, so sitting at sub 30 FPS at 720p is misery, especially for a game so slow paced to begin with. Black Mesa is much more playable, with a near 30 FPS a lot of the time. This is also at 720p. It reminds me a lot of playing the uh, original PC release of Half Life 2 back in the mid-2000s on a PC that really couldn't handle it then either. Halo next, and wow, I guess I'm on a first-person shooter kick right now? Let's get into a firefight to see how well it can handle a grunt apocalypse. As you can see, we've got 1080p with half rendering resolution and performance level graphics. Honestly, it's absolutely playable. Here I am headshotting grunts like there's no tomorrow. And finally, Ion Fury. This is a build engine game, so it runs flawlessly, as you'd expect. Which is good, since this game at any less than a locked 60 FPS is pretty unplayable, in my opinion. Well, there you have it. Gaming on a business laptop. Sadly, I don't have a Ryzen 4000 based laptop to compare it to, uh, because I am poor, and also, this doesn't belong to me, so... <laughs> yeah, uh, if you enjoyed, leave a like, uh, follow me wherever. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and see you guys next time. Trip.